G'day guys, welcome to the channel and we're working on the XA sedan once more. Uh, we're going to pick up where we left off last time which is the doors. Uh, so in the last episode uh, we did the rust repairs, plenished them and then prepped and primed the inside of the doors with the epoxy primer and we also primed the hinges. So in this episode we're fitting the doors up, we're seeing how we go with the gaps and then trying to fix uh, any problems that we have with the gaps uh, and there are a couple so uh, anyway stick around I hope you enjoy it and thanks for watching all right you have to excuse the whippersnipper outside uh, but anyway one of the first things that I'm going to do here is I'm going to run a tap uh, you know through the threads where the hinges bolt on both on the car and also on the door simply because they've been primed there's paint all over the threads and uh, you know it's just generally a good idea to run a tap through them clean the thread all up before you start trying to bolt them up so that's what we're going to do alrighty so a couple of years ago I was rebuilding one of my own cars and I decided to go ahead and get a whole bunch of bolts plated and uh, this is the result so yeah it's turned out to be a pretty good collection so we want hinge bolts okay all right so the only thing about these bolts is sometimes there's just a, ends up with a little bit too much plating on the tip i noticed so sometimes they're okay but sometimes i um i find i need to like i've already done a few oh that's not one of them where are they oh here we go yeah so i'll just kind of like just round that end off a little bit because I thought I don't know what it is but I think it might be just a build-up of the CAD plating it just makes it a little bit hard to start but if you just round that off a little bit they're fairly easy to get going so anyway we'll give that a try see how we go all right so it looks like I'm totally wrong about um, a couple of these hinges this one that I've got on the front here it's jamming up and uh, it's got a fair amount of wear on it I might um, I might take it off and uh, put a kit through it see how we go all right so all I've done on this particular hinge is I've just replaced the pin and the and the roller uh, and the spring so the reason I replaced that pin and the roller is if you have a close look at the roller you can see how it's really gouged out from that little arm running over it constantly so anyway should be all good now I'll show you on I'm, I'm probably gonna um, I'm probably gonna be replacing the same thing on the passenger side as well because I think the two front obviously the two front door hinges take probably the most wear so we'll see how we go and we'll get this one done all right so I put new strikers on and uh where is he there he is and um fix that front hinge but the latch is pretty grotty so i think what i'll do is i'll just give them a little bit of a clean up with some brake clean and then we'll fit them up and see if we can get this door to close well this is a score i found this um door latch mechanism just laying amongst the parts and yeah Looks almost new old stock. Beautiful. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and we'll stick this on the back door. Alright, so I think I've got it approximately close. Uh, what the hell does that mean, approximately close? It's one or the other, isn't it? No, close enough. Let's just good say enough. I've got it close. Close enough for southwest Sydney. How's that? Uh, but. I'm, I'm fairly, I'm fairly okay with the actual position of the doors, but there's a couple of like weird things going on which I'm going to maybe have to address. Um, it's really tight here, um, just around the back of the door, and right down in the corner it's tight. Um, for whatever reason, I don't know. It's no point speculating. It just is. So I'll probably have to do something about it. Um, I thought about you know moving forward but it's actually really tied up the top here on the b pillar so that's another thing which is a bit weird is that 
is sort of like an uneven gap around the B pillar. Uh, what else? No, yeah, that's about it really. So it's tight at the back and it's uneven around the B pillar. So um, I'll have to make a decision what to do. I think maybe the best idea might be to fit the guard up, put the front guard on and see how that's looking. Um, either way, whatever's wrong can be fixed. So I wouldn't leave it like this. If I wasn't going to move the door, then I'd probably just end up trimming a bit off the door and, uh, and then just welding it up. And as far as the rest of it goes, I got this uh, timber ruler here. And this is a good way of sort of seeing, you know, how much body filler you're going to use. So say in a case like that, if I wasn't going to do anything with it, the, you know, what's that? I don't know, I can't really measure with my eyes, but that's probably like a mil or so. This wouldn't be more. Um, but yeah, if you go along like that, and you just run it down, you can sort of see, you know, where it's wrong, where it's, so, sorry, where it's low. Say for example, if you look down here, there's actually a dent here and you can see the daylight showing through. Can you see the daylight in the camera? Just. Just? Okay. But the alignment at the moment is fairly good. But it took me a lot of mucking around to get there, you know. But anyway, that's the way it goes. So, what I might do, is I might just throw the guard on just, you know, just for kicks and giggles. See how it looks. See if it's happy with the door and if they like each other or not. All right, let's do that. So that pretty much tells a story. <laughs> uh, what the story is, I don't know, but we've obviously got an uneven gap here on our guard, and we've got the guard back as far as it'll go. But it kind of ties into also that uneven gap on the on the B pillar. However, on the sill, the sill tells us that we don't want the front of the door to go up more and the back to come down more. So, oh look, you know. There's other falcons out there with uneven gaps. I'm sure of it. I'm sure I've seen some somewhere. Anyway, this, this can be fixed. I might even, you know what? The more I look at it, I'm thinking I could actually even just simply not even bother with touching the door. If I look here and I see that that sill sticks way forward of the door, if I wanted the guard to come back more, I could simply trim that, I could trim that recess 4 mil, and then I could move the guard back a bit. Because I've got a reasonably even gap between the two doors. And yeah, some weird gaps on the back, but I think I'll just trim that door. Because it opens and closes nicely, everything's fairly good. Yeah, what the hell. Anyway, I'll keep playing with it. We'll see what happens. All right, I'm going to see if I can do something about this B pillar. It's just, you know, slightly...
tell you what, that didn't take much at all. Might not be perfect, but it is way, way more even than it was. So we'll call that a job done. What else? Well, yeah, like I was saying, I might do a little bit of modification down the bottom there so I can close that up. But once that's done, then I think I'm pretty much happy with it. Apart from, of course, back here. So this is going to take some time. Just basically grind a bit off and um, just mig it up again, plenish it. Basically just needs to open, fit to open that gap up, you know, to five mil or something. Yeah, so. All right, we'll carry on. I might jump on the other side and get the guard on, do the same thing over there. Okay, I know what I have to do on the driver's side. So, I thought I'd jump over here on the passenger side and we'll have a quick look at this one. So we've got a similar thing with the uh, gap between guard and front door. Actually, I think what I'll do is I'll grab a, um, a vernier and we'll get some actual measurements. All right, so at the moment I've got 7.3 at the bottom there and 5.7 at the top. So I'd say the top one is probably bang on. So we need to close the bottom a little bit. And we'll have a look at the pillar here because that also um, helps us understand. So we've got 4.3 at the bottom. And 8.7 at the top. So it's pretty obvious what has to happen. This whole door has to like that. So that's um, that's pretty basic. Let's have a look at the back one. Got 6.2 and 5.2, 6.2, 5.2. I probably wouldn't even bother changing that. Okay, and this is the uh, same as the other side. Actually, it seems to be quite tight. The other side's worse. So this one here, I've only got 3.2, 3.7, So, yeah. What do you got? 5.1, 4.6, 5.7, 5.8. It actually varies a whole, just over a millimeter through here. And then it's way open here. Like I've said before, this is just meant to be, you know, like a fun car. I, um, it's not, a, you know, I'm not aiming for a show car. But at the same time, when you think about it, you go to all that time and trouble, you know, to do your, your steel work, your body work, your paint work all that time, money that you put into it, if you actually put that much more effort just into this part of it and end up with uniform gaps, I think it's worth it. So we're in line with the pillar, basically. We've got a nice even line around the top, slightly tight there. So, all right. I think I'll take that guard off again and uh, we'll play around a little bit more with this front door. I'm adjusting this door and I thought I'd just um, get sort of a more of a close-up of what I'm doing. So what I, find, what I have found works for me is if I can figure out which way I want the door to move, then I loosen all bolts except one, and that one bolt is gonna be my, my hinge kind of thing. So at the moment, I'm looking at a slightly uneven gap here. I know it's tight down here on the sill, 
and a little bit wide up here. So I'm just going to play around and see if, if I close that just slightly, how everything else looks. I don't want to go too much, obviously. But, yeah. So what I'm going to do, because I want to move that, that top in, I'm going to use this very bottom bolt, this, this one right down here, as my hinge, so to speak, for want of a better term. And then I'm just going to loosen those. Grab my little lever, put it under the door. Come on, be nice. And you can see there how I how I can hinge it. So I'm going to this is partly open, so that's why the gap doesn't look bright. See how I go with this. That's way too much. Good gap at the back there. So in case you're wondering like why I'm being such a butcher, I'm not moving the pillar. The pillar's still welded and everything, but it's this this front part here, it just has like that part that you actually see, it has it has a, a bit of give in it. So if you whack that side, it will kind of like twist a little bit. And it's all just for a, just for the sake of trying to get the gap right. But the reason I was, you know, really trying to do that was because I wanted to get this gap here without having to chop and cut things. So that's much better. All right. So what we've got now, let me see how the driver's side looks. Okay. Yeah, so it's fairly even. The frame for the door is just sitting probably a couple of mil in from the pillar. So this door needs to sort of twist out, but the back door is fairly even. I'll probably almost be inclined to leave it that way. Could probably go in a little bit. Yeah, what the hell, I'll, I'll take it in ever so slightly. So now, what have we got? Fairly, well it's a better gap, it's opened more. It's not perfectly even, but we'll work that out later. Cool, 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 cool. Cool. Yeah, it's cool. Yep. Right. Okay. Is I think I'll whack the latches on or find some latches. I don't have any. I've, no, I've got some, but I need to go and sort out which ones I'm going to use. Well, I never noticed this before. This door's had some wax from the inside as well. Hmm. Okay. All right, let's get some latches. Oh, latch. My 
I've been a blatching something. Oh, I think oh, that's a left. Yep, left. That's a right. And I've got a bunch here. That's right. That's left. That's a rear one. And left, but it's all painted. And I think I've got the best of the of them. Yeah, what's that doing there? Go away. Once again, guys, apologies for the noise in the background. I hope I can filter some of it out, but just can't guarantee it. Uh, all right, so where we're up to now is I've got my pillar gaps reasonable. Um, the back door gap, still a little on the tight side, but it's, it's not horrible. The gap on the door, slightly more even, but I'm still gonna have to make some adjustments, like say, there, for example. That needs a little bit of snip and tuck. Um, along the bottom with the cell, I'm not too worried at this stage because you can always sort of hammer the, you know, the bottom edge of the door either in or out. Uh, won't worry about that at this stage. So what I wanted to do is just see how far out the door is with everything else. So it looks like that back door at the moment is a gap probably doesn't show so well but yeah it's sitting out a little bit so actually but then it's yeah no it's sitting out a little bit so what I'll do is I'll just tap the striker in a little bit and um, have another look got probably a, a difference of about a mil mil and a half at the top so I might just leave that for now so with the doors, yeah, about the same. There's about a mil there. It's about the same. It's like the, this door is actually sort of curving in when it gets to the edge. I think what I'll do, I'll put the slide hammer on it, give it a few whacks and bring it out slightly, see how that goes. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, so both doors are kind of like curving in when it gets to the edge. 
which if you're doing body filling you don't really want because you don't want a big fat edge of body filler so it's better just to use a slide hammer and pull that edge out so you have a consistently thin edge yeah so if you look at that you see what I mean they're both sort of curving inwards mind you this front door's all over the place yeah but all the way down look at that it's better as it gets to the bottom so you can see all the dents in it it's nasty okay just to give you an idea it's probably a good 10 mil in there so let's get the easy beat onto that and pull it out and then just play just play around with it i guess okay All right, let's see where we're up to. So we started off with a pretty crap door and um, we still have a fairly crap door. But the difference is that where this uh, big dent in the front of it was probably 10, 12 mil recessed in, um, just going over it with the easy beat, it's pr uh, the top it starts off with probably gets to two, three mil. So, yeah, so at the worst of it, it's probably three mil. I don't know how it looks on the camera, but that's what it looks like to me. And it just didn't seem to wanna come out much more than that. You can see how many times I've been over it with the easy beat I mean it looks like a plucked chicken but uh, the other thing is it got the tin camming out of it so it's you know fairly solid so yeah I'm, I'm not sure if I want to do much more to it I think got the majority of the dent out got the tin canning out so might even just leave it at that and um, do the rest with filler but anyway moving right along yeah We're getting somewhere. Where we're getting to, who knows, I don't know, but we're going somewhere. Okay. I'm gonna leave the video there, guys. If you made it this far, then you're an absolute legend. Again, sorry for the uh, all that background noise, the jet blaster and whatnot. Um, it went on for days, so I, uh, and I didn't really know how bad it was until I actually got stuff loaded in the computer. So I've done my best to filter it out. As I say, if you made it this far, you're an absolute legend. So thanks again for watching and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. I think next time we're back on the XA, probably gonna be doing a bit of a catch up on the doors. I'll probably work on the gaps. Uh, again, um, probably what I'll be doing is a little bit of nip and tuck, you know, a little bit of trimming here and there and, and, uh, and welding the edges and what have you. Uh, but hopefully next time you see it, we'll have all the gaps spot on and uh, we'll move on to the next stage. So um, we'll catch you in the next one.